Yes, I'm Jeffrey Giuliano, one of the actors from Squid Game, husband and a father who had a problem at the airport in Amsterdam. I had been on a shoot in Lisbon, Portugal, and my son and I had a layover at the Amsterdam airport. It was quite a long layover, and the service on the plane was, was not good, and something happened. We weren't able to get really any food and hardly anything to drink. So when we got off, we immediately, you know, we wanted to try to get something. I was in a wheelchair for the coming and going because I hurt this left knee in a, a stunt I shouldn't have been doing, probably. He was pushing me through the airport, and we were looking for a place to, to eat, and we saw McDonald's. Now, many people who know me know that I'm a vegan, an animal rights activist, and uh, yeah, the McDonald's is not my first, second, third, or fourth choice, but the, I didn't see anything else, and I didn't want to go too much into that airport. It's really big. Uh, to find some place. So we decided to go there. When we got there, there was an older Indian gentleman uh, who uh, welcomed us. I, I think they're called greeters. Put us in, in line. You know, was, was courteous. Meanwhile, they were serving people. There were people behind me. There were pe just two or three people in front of me. And as I got to, you know, just a couple of people to be served, the manager, I know he's a manager because it said so on his, um, on his, on his jacket, uh, no, no, sorry, sorry, we're closed now. Uh, and I said, well, look, I, I mean, I, I've been in line here. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I would like to get something. I, I'm, I'm pre-diabetic, and I need to, you know, I can't go too long without something. Not that I would eat junk food, or not that I feel entitled in any way to anything, but, you know, I'm in my 60s, and I, I felt I needed something to eat. I, I know I did. So he stopped it, and I made some kind of protest, you know, like, hey, this is wrong. Or, I don't remember exactly what I said. And he came towards me. At that point, I turned on my cell phone because I felt that I was in perhaps some danger, and I wanted to record what was going on, or maybe that by holding up the cell phone, it would diffuse the situation and that he would just kind of back off and calm down. That didn't happen. He came forward. He struck me uh, it, from the side. And, I, of course, you can see in the tape that I said, hey, don't touch me, that's assault. And the, the, the situation progressed with some unhappy words, and, yeah, that was that. Now, this gentleman was completely out of line. I'm not asking for anything special. I'm just asking for what the service that they were providing for everyone else. Before I got in line, in front of me, people were being served, and after this incident, they served people. So how can it be closed? How can it be closed? I have been told, although I don't, know how to do it, that the time code on my video was such that it was within the hours that it should not be ready to be closed. So there wasn't really any issue. Now you may say, well, why, why do you think they, they wouldn't serve you? The only thing I can think is that he heard us talking. We were talking in a normal tone, but he could hear the American accents, and maybe he didn't like that. I don't know the answer as to why he did this. He had a fight with his wife, he wanted to go home, he was drunk, I don't know. But uh, I can surmise that possibly it was because we are American. And, and the situation just escalated to the point that he struck me with his body. And now uh, I felt no sense of personal entitlement. You know, people should be aware that this kind of behavior is happening at a restaurant. Look, we live in a world where there's school shootings. This isn't the most important thing that we can talk about, but it, it, it's a matter of just protocol and common decency and, and simple respect that if you have a business and you're offering a service that it should be offered to everybody, you know, without exception, who's behaving themselves, which we were. So that's kind of what happened at the airport. Yes, I'm going to take legal action, and I would like any attorneys out there from that part of the world to come forward to represent me, sure, that would be terrific. But mainly, the basis of this story was informational. I wanted people to know what was happening, how people were being treated, so perhaps it wouldn't happen again. Well, uh, I am Eden. I am Jeffrey's son. I'm 15, and half Thai, half American. I was pushing my dad around in the airport and we were just trying to get some food. We didn't really have many like options because we don't eat meat. So we just went to go to McDonald's, but when we got in line, the guy basically was like, hey, we're, cl we're closed, even though it clearly should not have been closed. And why just when we stepped in the line? Because we were just trying to get food. 
Uh, and then like everything just kind of went downhill from that. <laughs> like the physical contact and stuff like that. It was upsetting because I just wanted to get food with my dad and carry on with my flight and everything. I didn't like, I was, I was just upset. Well, I was like confused and scared. So yeah, a little bit. I just wanted the situation to cool down and breathe over. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was definitely embarrassed. I, cause just, it was, you know, everybody was looking and it was just being too touchy with my dad and I didn't even want it to happen. I just wanted to get my food and sit down just like everybody. So yeah, I did. Um, maybe he's just a magnet for bad events. I don't know. Unlucky. <laughs> so I was a vegetarian. I didn't like the idea of anything to do with meat. It, basically, since I was 15, I'm now in my mid-60s. And I was hired to play this Burger King character for the TV commercials, just right out of drama school. Well, I did that for a year and a half, maybe. And then I was told that McDonald's was looking for someone to replace the guy on TV to do the commercials. So I auditioned for that. I beat out a lot of people. And I was hired and had to move up to Toronto to do that. So I did these shows, safety shows for children and commercials and appearances and so forth. But yeah, the, it's ironic that I was Ronald McDonald and that I was booted out of McDonald's if they only knew that, uh, that they had uh, kicked Ronald McDonald out of McDonald's. It, it's, it's ironic and maybe funny. As I say, the most important thing is to let people know what happened, to communicate this outrageous behavior on part of the McDonald's staff. But I am considering legal action and would like to, to speak with an attorney about that to see if, if, if something can be done. Certainly an apology, some sort of legal situation could, can be looked at, but mostly I don't want it to happen again to anybody else.